YouTube frogs, welcome back to another complete guide, this time covering everything you need to know about our beautifully devastating dice creek, Yalon. Before this video, I'd highly recommend checking out my Constellation Zero first look and weapon comparison Yalon videos for maximum context. Don't worry if you haven't though, I will easily catch you up to speed in this complete guide. We'll be covering her talents, playstyle nuances, optimal weapons and artifacts, constellations, team comps, and showcasing her in the abyss. Friendly reminder that I do stream basically every day on Twitch, feel free to check out my chill community over there, link in the description. Let's begin. From the Constellation Zero first look, Yelon is a gorgeously powerful Hydro Burst DPS character with a brilliantly designed elemental skill dash and an occasional splash of charge attack. She is purely HP% percent focused, with no meaningful multipliers at all from attack or defense, and no conversion ability which means no benefit from Bennett buff. Elemental Burst, Depth Clarion Dice. Yelan summons her exquisite throw that follows the active character, doesn't have to be herself, that procs a 3 hit wave every second on normal attack usage. The normal attack does not need to hit or target an opponent for the dice to proc. Her elemental skill dash also procs the dice wave once on the nearest enemy after the damage explosion, as she follows normal internal cooldown rules of 3 hits or 2.5 seconds per element application, each 3 hit wave from her dice will always apply Hydro at least once, no matter which hit. This works great for assisting general Pyro DPS and is partially able but not fully able to keep up with more intense Pyro DPS like Hu Tao. Constellation 2 adds a 4th hit on every 2nd wave, increasing the consistency of her Hydro application by 17%. Damage output at level 6 comes to 20.4% max HP per wave, up to 15 waves for over 300% HP. Scaling off of crit damage and hydro burst damage bonus, this ability's raw damage is above average in strength. And with a rotation of 15 second uptime and 18 second cooldown on a 70 energy cost, her burst has excellent rotation looping value. The 70 energy cost is 10 less than the usual long form burst energy cost at 80, so Yelan has a slight upper hand on practical looping value. Especially in solo hydro situations, this helps tremendously on slightly reducing her practical energy recharge requirements. Elemental Skill Lingering Lifeline On tap or hold, Yelan enters a dash state for a period of time, gaining move speed and wrapping enemies along the path. She's not invincible and doesn't have iframes, but the increased move speed and interruption resist allows for easy repositioning without stamina usage. On skill end, the ability explodes, dealing single target hydro damage to every trapped enemy, grants 3 to 4 hydro particles, and has a 34% chance per enemy to reset her charge attack barb shot. Because this is an RNG thing, and anything that's not 100% is destined to fail, I try not to think about charge attacking after using her E. The 10 second cooldown here starts after she ends the ability. With a 31.7% HP multiplier at level 6, this ability has the highest single nuke hit in her kit. So for any big vaporized damage numbers you want to show off, this is the ability to use. For in practice skill usage, you will mostly be using tap E, which is one key press and it's super quick. If you hold E, it will require a manual cancelling at the end before doing any other action, which is two key presses or waiting the whole 3 seconds. You'll notice any of the key presses at the bottom right to cancel the ability while in hold mode. Normal Charge Attack Breakthrough Barbs So unless you're planning on some physical Yelon, you won't need to worry about any of these multipliers except for the Breakthrough Barbs. These HP% percent AoE nukes either activate after 5 seconds out of combat or RNG reset from Elemental Skill Lifeline or Constellation 6 Normal Attacks, the first 5. They have 60% decreased charge time and are ready to use when her bracelet is glowing. So in combat, well, you can't really get out of combat reset when you're in combat, so it's really only available off of the elemental skill RNG or if you have Constellation 6. This is why for Constellation 5 and below, I would only recommend using them to initiate the fight for Hydro application so your supports can swirl and not think about them during mid-fights. Now for our passives, both are very straightforward. Ascension 1 provides HP% percent the more unique elements are on the team, and Ascension 4 provides a dynamic, non-snapshotable damage increase to whichever party member is active on the field. To make the most use of Ascension 4, rotational DPS is best over off-field sub-DPS. You can see Xiaoling's power nato here demonstrates that A4 is not snapshotable. So, talent priority. Anything below Constellation 6, I would recommend Elemental Burst first, and then elemental skill and the normal and charge attack as you please. Leveling her talents only increases the HP% percent damage that is done. If you are constellation 6, elemental burst and normal and charge attack become priority. The elemental skill can be left at whatever you want, but if you're constellation 6, you better have at least 888.
Now for playstyle nuances and the most important topic of Hydro character discussion, Hydro application. Yelon's playstyle is simplistic, forgiving, and satisfying. Constellation Zero gamers have the choice of using her dash skill before burst or after burst. I have typically found before burst to be the most fluid of rotations. It also allows energy to travel mid burst animation. Using it after is also fine and you do get a burst proc for sustained DPS. Constellation 1 or higher gamers can run standard EQE, which is elemental skill, into burst into elemental skill, and then swap out, allowing 20 seconds for both charges to come back as well as burst to come off its 18 second cooldown. Or just use her elemental skill on cooldown and then burst whenever the rotation is ready. It's not necessary to have a perfect EQE every time. I'd only use the charge attack breakthrough barb to lead the fight or as filler. If you're a Constellation 6 gamer, then EQE into the 5 normal attacks that have her Constellation 6 buff, and then swap to the next rotational DPS. Beautiful. So now, how does her Hydro application look like in common situations? For Taser, it's standard as expected. There are no issues with her burst application to maintaining double auras all the time. Here you can see this with C6 Fischl as the Electro Applier. Now for Pyro DPS, it depends on the situation. I tried running this with Yoimiya's standard auto sequence, Hu Tao in both an N1C and an N2C, as well as Klee with her billion mini Pyro attacks. For Klee, just Yelon is not enough. She has an immense amount of small Pyro attacks that consistently reapply Pyro. You can see that Yelon is the one blocking Vaporize every single time. Double Hydro with Xingqiu as well would be a better choice. For Yoimiya, Yelon is perfectly fine. Yoimiya's 3-hit sequence application is slower, and Yelon sends almost two 3-hit waves before Yoimiya procs a Vaporize. Now for Hu Tao, I tried both N1 charged and N2 charged. N1 charged seemed to have no issues. Even after the burn kicked in, Yelon was still able to be nearly fully consistent with her Hydro Aura. N2 charge was a bit more inconsistent. In one clip, I was able to get pure vaporizes, but in another, the burn kicked in and Yelon was the one that started vaporizing. If this was a whole team with, for example, double Geo, then Yelon's application would be further shaken and pose heavy inconsistencies. Qingqiu with both his burst hydro application and his rain sword contact application is much more consistent for Hu Tao, especially because she's always in melee range. But personally, i just run both. It's super satisfying when your Pyro DPS has like a Gilgamesh weapon army assisting them. Now that the basics have been covered, here's what my Constellation Zero Yelan looks like and what I would recommend your stat thresholds be. She's currently level 80 out of 80, Constellation Zero, level 6 talents, 4-piece emblem set, and running the R5 Favonius Warbow. With this particular energy recharge weapon, I can offer an HP% percent timepiece, Hydro Goblet, and a crit rate mask. My recommendations for weapons and artifacts are coming up in just a second. So this is my replication of a high investment F2P Constellation Zero Yelon build. I will run her with Aqua in the future. She's currently 25.6k HP with no team members, almost 80 crit, 172 crit damage, 195 recharge, and 46.6 hydro slash burst damage. If you include 4 piece emblem with this recharge, this adds an additional 49% burst damage for a total of 95.6 hydro slash burst damage. So now that you've seen what mine looks like with the Favonius bow, here are my general recommended stats for Yelon. 24k plus HP with no team members, which allows you to hit at least 25k with one different element team member. 70 crit, 140 crit damage. If you have Aqua, then 200 plus crit damage. And then minimum 150% recharge. Recommended 180% and then 200% for near guaranteed looping. 150% recharge is a main stat timepiece or weapon. 180% is the 150% plus a 2 piece emblem and a 1 substat roll, and then 200% is a combination. We'll talk about goblet choices and why HP% percent is a good balance when we get to artifacts. Since Yelon is an HP% percent scaler, I also do recommend going all the way to level 90 out of 90 instead of stopping at level 80 soft cap. This will maximize her base HP. Okay, let's build her up. Optimal weapon choices first. I'll be jumping straight into the strongest practical weapons I would recommend you use for her. If you'd like to see all 16 weapons showcased, I have a dedicated all-encompassing weapon comparisons video that will be in the description. 
For my very early game players, you guys don't have many weapons to work with and you want something that is cost efficient and low resource usage. Also, your Favonius bow might be currently used by another team member. 3 star recurve bow, one of the only 2 HP% percent weapons available for her and it blasts a majority of the other weapons out of the water DPS wise and builds really easily with artifacts, provides the necessary HP% percent to reach the minimum threshold that I recommend and allows your artifacts to focus on energy recharge, hydro damage and crit. For budget players, any of the energy recharge secondary stat weapons are going to be your best friend including the 2.7 event bow Fading Twilight. My most versatile recommendation is Favonius Warbow. Provides a juicy amount of energy recharge that allows you to hit any of the recommended thresholds without substats. Combined with 20% recharge from Emblem and you're good to go. The passive here is way too good to pass up for both team energy and self-sufficient funneling energy. It's also easy to proc with her multi-hit burst and general kit rotation. This is my number one general purpose recommendation besides her signature weapon. Fading Twilight and Sacrificial have the same base stats just with lower innate recharge. I'd choose the Fading Twilight over the Sacrificial as it is a universal default energy recharge and damage increasing weapon suitable in any circumstance. For my players with access to some strong gacha weapons at R5, Moon's Bow at R5. With a high energy cost team, this bow's damage is second to only Aqua Simulacra, her signature 5 star. There's also Stringless and Alley Hunter at R5. These are both also viable choices, just weaker versions of the Moon's Bow. For my players with 5 star weapon options, I'd only consider using Elegy or Aqua Simulacra. Anything else is beaten by raw utility from the energy recharge weapons or straight up damage by Moon's or 3 star recurve bow. Elegy provides another juicy amount of recharge and the elemental mastery transfer is optimal for assisting power DPS like Yoimiya or Hu Tao. Aqua Simulacra is her signature and provides the highest personal damage output for her. To check out all the rest of the weapons tested, my other weapon video will be in the description. Artifacts. Those of you who watched the Constellation Zero first look video have a solid understanding of what to expect here. As primarily a burst DPS Hydro user, Yelan's strongest artifact set is unsurprisingly 4-piece emblem set. Not only does she get 20% additional recharge from the 2-piece, but the 4-piece will typically grant 40% or more burst damage bonus with 160 or greater recharge. But those of you who aren't able to scrounge up a decent 4-piece emblem set, worry not, she's still incredibly flexible with her 2-piece choices. We have Heart of Death for Hydro Damage, Tenacity for HP% percent, Noblesse for Burst Damage% percent as the 3 DPS options. We also have 2 piece Emblem set for the 20% recharge to help you hit minimum energy recharge thresholds. For these 3 DPS choices, Heart of Depth, Tenacity, and Noblesse, they are within 3% strength of each other, so I'll prioritize the best substats to mix and match. The 2 piece Emblem set granting 20% recharge should be a priority if you're struggling to hit stable recharge values. For my newer below AR45 players out there, both Exile and Scholar set in both their 2 piece or 4 piece forms are great early recharge options before you're able to farm for endgame sets. For my Constellation 6 gamers, besides 4 piece Emblem set being the strongest general purpose set, 4-piece Heart of Depth and 4-piece Wanderers are also possible choices strictly to boost her C6 buffed barb shots. Now, for main stat choices, these are also super flexible and really depend on what weapon choice you decide to use. And because 4-piece Emblem provides a goblet's worth of burst damage percent, her goblet flexibility opens up HP percent. Signature Aqua Simulacra. Two viable builds here. Energy Recharge Timepiece with an HP or a Hydro Goblet alongside a Crit Rate Mask. This will enable a 180% recharge build. The other alternative is Energy Recharge, Hydro Goblet, and HP% percent Mask. This is a viable alternative since the Simulacra gives so much crit damage at 80% percent plus. Then we have Energy Recharge based weapons. I'd recommend HP% percent Timepiece, Hydro Goblet, and Crit Rate or Crit Damage Mask. The Energy Recharge you will get from the weapon plus the 2-piece Emblem set. Alternatively, you can use an Energy Recharge Timepiece if you want greater than 200% percent recharge. Then we have Hydro or Burst Damage based weapons. I'd recommend Energy Recharge Timepiece, HP% percent Goblet because you already have Hydro Burst Damage from the weapon and Emblem, and then Crit Rate, Crit Damage Mask. And if you're using the 3 star recurve bow because all of your Favonius bows are already being used, then Energy Recharge Timepiece, Hydro Damage Goblet, and a Crit Rate, Crit Damage Mask because you're getting HP% percent from the bow. For my Constellation 6 gamers, she turns into a rotational main DPS, so she follows standard HP DPS build which is HP Timepiece, Hydro Goblet with a Crit Rate or Crit Damage Mask. Or an alternative, if you have Aqua Simulacra, is HP% percent Timepiece, Hydro Goblet, and an HP% percent Circlet. This C6 build will likely hover between 130 to 150% percent recharge due to running full DPS artifacts. No matter what build you decide to run, prioritize meeting minimum energy recharge thresholds mentioned in the recommended stats section. 
Constellations. Fortunately, Yelon is a perfectly stable unit at Constellation 0. But if you have a little extra dough to spare and want to aim for her earlier constellations, 1 and 2 will provide the earliest value before going all out to C6. Constellation 1. Her elemental skill dash ability gains one extra charge. This enables a skill to burst to skill rotation every 20 to 21 seconds over the standard skill to burst or burst to skill rotation. This provides more energy, reducing energy recharge requirements to below 160 and adds an extra tick of damage to both her burst and her elemental skill. It's a quality of life constellation that improves her DPS by about 15% and lowers her recharge threshold. Constellation 2. Every second attack from her elemental burst will fire an additional fourth shot, dealing 14% max HP. This is her highest value early constellation for two reasons. The main one is 17% more effective hydro application. Each two wave sequence from her burst now hits seven times instead of six times. This softly improves her hydro application stability on more intensive DPS characters like Hu Tao. Secondary reason is it boosts her burst damage by 20 to 30%, a lower boost if you have a higher talent level. At level 6, two waves of her burst deals about 41% max HP. Constellation 2 would add 40% to that, a significant 30% gain. Constellation 3 and Constellation 5 are standard plus 3 levels, with her burst being early at Constellation 3. Constellation 4 is a self and team 10 to 40% max HP percent team buff, which is pretty self explanatory. It's not as effective against less than 4 enemies. This is also synergistically favorable for teammates like Hu Tao who benefit from extra HP. Finally, Constellation 6. Activating her burst state buffs her next 5 normal attacks to deal enhanced charge attack barbshot damage, the mastermind state. This is 156% of the multiplier of her charge attack barbshot, so normal attack talent does matter for this constellation. You simply take the multiplier, multiply it by 1.56, and that's the strength of her C6 hits. At level 6, they'd be dealing 25% max HP each, multiplied by 5 normal attacks for about 125% max HP damage. This is an additional 30% damage boost to her C4 plus burst damage rotation. But this can be considered a nuke, since all 5 can be shot in one normal attack rotation, dealing 125% max HP percent damage in under 2 seconds. At level 8 normal attack, this total multiplier increases to 144% max HP. So in my opinion, I would say that Yelon has a pretty well distributed constellation layout. Constellation 0 is a great baseline. Constellation 1 is quality of life. Constellation 2 is improved hydro application. C4 is a self and team buff, and then C6 is pure damage. Team Compositions As a Hydro Burst DPS, Yelan fits in nearly all the same situations as Xing Cho does. As a solo Hydro support, she slots in best for Taser Comps, Overvape slash Soup, Rational, and Standard National. While she can be used for Freeze Compositions, they will require normal attack activations for the Hydro procs. For Pyro DPS Compositions, it becomes more situational. Low Constellation Yoimiya plus Yelan is perfect. No issues from my testing with Yoimiya vaporizing her shots. For Hu Tao, solo C0 Yelan is conditional. C2 is preferred here. For my recommendation, double hydro including Xingqiu is the safest and guaranteed for ease of playstyle. The last slot in double hydro Hu Tao is pretty flexible. Zhongli for safety, Kazuo or Animo for buffing and debuffing, or you can even run Xiaoling for double pyro, double hydro, double reverse vaporize, which from what I understand, this comp is called Funerational. Half of it is national, and then there's Hu Tao and Yelan. For the Taser comp, it would typically include Sucrose plus Yelan plus Fischl or Beidou. Overvape slash Soup would include Raiden plus Yelan plus Kazo or Jean plus Bennett. Rational and National team comps would be swapping Shincho's slot for Yelan. Now, besides these compositions, you can also opt for a Mono Hydro compositions, though this is a lot easier if you have C6 on field Yelan. We have Ayato, Mona, Shincho, and Kakomi all being stable options to include here as they each provide their own value to the team. C6 Yelan gamers can utilize fast rotation compositions with Venti and the Raiden Shogun. These two have the best synergies for Whale Yelan gamers as they assist with crowd control and maximize her burst rotation and general damage. C0 Yelan gamers will still find tremendous value pairing with Raiden Shogun on any particular team. In my opinion, it's fairly evident that Yelan has a very, very wide range of team options that she can fit on for excellent value. She can either solo Hydro support or duo Hydro support with Xing Cho, unlocking old and new compositions to try out. Now onto a little bit of a showcase. Here's a mixture of clips with Overvape, Hu Tao, Yoimiya Double Hydro, and Taser Double Hydro. Cue the music, Mr. Cope.
Okay, not bad damage. Just a small one. Wait, it's only two of them? Wait, that's it? Oh, this is... Wait, it's only these two? For... Wait, no way. Wait, this is actually, like... Okay, we're in this easy collab with. Ah, this is easy clap, boys. Easy. 35 seconds for that challenge. And that about sums things up. I truly feel that Yelon has given fresh air into the game with her slick and smooth gameplay design with refreshing animations. Flexible builds, artifacts, and a really simple playstyle make her super satisfying to use both on-field with her elemental skill and off-field. Using her solo Hydro or pairing with Xing Chou unlocks a variety of satisfying team comps to fit anyone's fancy. That wraps up all my general findings and concludes a massive set of general info videos on Yelon. My editing team and I have been working non-stop for nearly two weeks to get you guys all these videos with proper editing, and now we can rest a little. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this series of videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you on the next time. Take care.